Hello and welcome to Walk and Talk on Onco Daily. Today we are here with Yelena Zhangijian. Hello. It's nice to meet you. Would you be able to uh, introduce yourself? Sure. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Zhangijian. I'm a medical oncologist and chief of GI oncology service, gastrointestinal oncology service at Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York City. I'm here in beautiful Yerevan today uh, attending an ASCO organized uh, event for the Armenian oncologist, uh, speaking on treatment of gastrointestinal malignancies, how we approach it at our center. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's, on, it's our honor to have you here. We're going to take a stroll and chat a little bit, if you don't mind. Sounds good. I love it. OK, so first question is, what's the most adventurous or daring thing you've done and what's motivated you to do it? That's a good question. And uh, there are several things we could talk about. I would bring up something professionally. Um, as a relatively early uh, career physician at Memorial Sloan Kettering, uh, five years ago, an opportunity came up to apply for a leadership position uh, to become service chief uh, at our hospital, which is a very big, important uh, leadership position, uh, overseeing uh, over 40 doctors, medical oncologists, treating uh, different cancers everywhere from esophagus cancer to the rectal canal. Um, and uh, it's a big position. There weren't that many women uh, mm -hmm. doing this for the hospital and certainly no one uh, my age, most of the doctors that I would be overseeing uh, were at least 10, 15, 20 years older than me. Um, so uh, it was a relatively daring uh, move to apply for the uh, position. Uh, and I did, and uh, against all odds, I was selected after you know uh, almost six months to a year of selection process, 15 different positions applied. Uh, so it was very competitive. It's a very uh, important job at the hospital. A big and, achievement. Yeah, so for me to have to be able to do that, uh, it was uh, it was important, and uh, it was relatively the whole time, entire time, I was thinking, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? <laughs> uh, but it was one of the uh, most daring things I did. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, can you share a favorite childhood memory that still brings a smile to your face? Yes. So I was born in Baku, Azerbaijan. Uh, and uh, in the summer for my birthday, we would always celebrate it on uh, the Caspian Sea. Mm. And so my favorite childhood memory is for my birthday, I always, as a present, uh, got the entire watermelon to myself. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that would bring a smile to your yes, face. Yes, and uh, it's, uh, to this day, I always say, tell my kids about it, uh, that I always said that was my present for my birthday is an entire oh, watermelon. watermelon. Yes. So, <laughs> Uh, and it's something that always uh, warms my heart to it's think about it. Something that would sound exciting for a child. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> if you had the opportunity to travel to any place in the world, where would you go and why? Well, before this week, if you asked me this question, I would have said Armenia. As a, but now we're here. Now we're here. <laughs> so uh, now that I'm here, I want to come back up and we'll be coming back very soon. Uh, but the, one of the few continents I have not been on and I travel a lot in academic medicine. We have to do a lot of travel. I have not been to Africa. Oh, so I really want to go to Africa. <laughs> okay, then we'll be waiting for your stories from Africa. Yes, of course. <laughs> What's the most valuable life lesson you've learned from a difficult or challenging experience? Yeah, being um, a refugee and an immigrant to a foreign country at a relatively not so young age. I was 14 and now having two teenage Still daughters. Though. Yeah, but having two teenage daughters, you learn that a poor, you know, being a teenager is a very awkward time in your life, very uh, transition for a point, uh, and transitioning to a completely different way of life, to a Western way of life, was uh, uh, very uh, interesting. Um, and but I never saw it that way. To me, when people say, "Oh, how traumatic it must have been," um, I never felt traumatized. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is, and the most important. Uh, part I've learned uh, from that experience is if you create a safe a circle with your family um, and have a nuclear family that you can always uh, rely count on and count on, um, I think that's, that was an experience and uh, for me uh, still to this day, if anything happens, the first person I call is my mom, my dad, or my brother. So having that safe space uh, is what I try to create 
for my children, my all of my even trainees and early career investigators mm -hmm. who may not have a stable of as an Armenian family. You know, we all always rely to our, yes, uh, on our yes. care, you know, and we have that in our culture, but others may not. And so I try to do that for my colleagues and trainees is create that safe space. And, and it's been shown that it, and studies show that that creates uh, less risk for burnout, less risk for you know issues, and the world is so complicated that having that is important. And I might even think that it boosts their confidence yeah. more, right. right? Okay. Do you have any unique or unusual habits or talents that people might be surprised to learn? Yes, I think uh, you know we always. You know, then uh, you people ask you if you had to develop, what's your superpower, right? Uh, if your superpower, I don't think a lot of people at work would know that or realize it. But my superpower is to be able to, on a very short notice, half an hour or less, uh, prepare a big meal for a large group of people. <laughs> I think it's the Armenian woman is yes, right yes, yes, yes. speaking. So I, you know, I don't think people see me like that at work. Uh, but that's, I would say that's uh, something that people would, and again, it goes back to family and having mm -hmm. that space where everyone's sitting at the same table, talking about what happened that day uh, in a safe space where uh, things come out and uh, mm -hmm. it's important. And it's not just for me and my entire immediate family. Uh, that's easy. That's no problem. I mean, large groups. I can put <laughs> together something pretty quickly. <laughs> okay, thanks. What's your go-to comfort food or guilty pleasure? Just something that you go to when you need to pick me up. Yeah, food is my comfort. I would say, and for those of you who speak Russian, I'll understand that, and I'll translate it, Zarina <laughs> Kartoska. <laughs> Fried food is my favorite. Mine, mine as well. Yeah, mine so as well, absolutely. My, my mom knows if I text her, I had a rough day in clinic, she knows immediately what she's going to make for me when I come <laughs> home. And then everything is better. Fried, uh, uh, home fried uh, potatoes. Yeah, that's not really French fries. Not French no, fries. It's, it's very different. Fried potatoes with butter. Yes. Like salt and pepper. Yes. I got hungry. Yeah. And having it with a little salad, like tomato and cucumber salad. And then Perfect. I'm okay. Nothing bothers <laughs> me. <laughs> um, what's a book, movie maybe, or a TV show that has left a profound impact on your outlook on life? I loved uh, growing up, um, and uh, even before I came to America and was able to become a physician, I thought I was going to be a writer. Uh, oh, and because that's a career change. Yeah, well, in the Baku, you know, Armenian was not going to be able to become a physician, yeah. so I was not a dreamer. I, I was a realist, so I was going to be a, a professor, maybe uh, you know, in linguistics or. or mm. So when I moved to America, I still had that profound love for literature. And I fell in love with Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Oh. So that he's my favorite author. And imagine reading that uh, through in the ESL, English as Second Language uh, class, and writing essays about it. But I, you know, I think uh, writing uh, was always important to me. And so learning it from uh, the best writers and his, uh, the Colombian mysticism in general captivated my, um, my imagination as a, as a teenager. Uh, and even now in academic medicine, if you're a good writer uh, and a good, uh, you can translate your ideas clearly, you're more likely to get grants, you're more likely to have your papers published in higher impact journal, and that obviously is very important for your career. Also, that would make it easier for people to understand exactly. you, like sharing your thoughts correctly. Yep. Okay, thank you. So, can you share a favorite quote, maybe, or a mantra? that resonates with you and your personality, something that you live by? Yeah, I think um, in general, I live by kindness and acceptance. But uh, again, when I first got the big position five years ago, uh, uh, you as a woman, especially, there's a bit of an imposter syndrome and you always wonder if you make the right decision. So my husband is probably one of my biggest uh, supporters. And that's very important as a woman in academic medicine. And so when I got the job, he bought me a watch. And on the back of the of watch, he inscribed, you know what to do. Uh. So uh, I think that's very important. You know, people uh, try to, you know, get advice and learn, etc. But I think if you look deep in your heart and you could be your best um, guide, because uh, if you really follow what you're excited about and what you realize is important to you, um, you know, and follow sort of promises, fulfill your own promises to yourself, 
I think you'll be okay. <laughs> okay, that sounds very personal, but I think I got it. Yeah. To a per on a personal level as yeah. well. Um, what's something on your bucket list that you're determined to accomplish by next year? Next year is a big, uh, big, big... Uh, I, I think next year is probably not doable, but maybe two or three years, because that's how long it takes uh, to learn a language. I want to learn Armenian. Oh, yeah. I think you will be able to, if you, yeah. especially if you come around a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there would be no problem. Yeah. And probably the last question for today is, what's a dream or an ambition of yours that you had since childhood and you still want to fulfill it? That's, you know, I think uh, I... Um, it's, this is a hard one. I don't really, um, I have short-term and long-term goals. Mm -hmm. I think the, the long-term goal, and that's what I want to uh, fulfill, is to have my entire family live together uh, and be happy and healthy. And I think, you know, that's a very uh, sort of simple goal, but it's a Natural hard one. Goal, yeah, yeah, hard to uh, fulfill. Achieve. Yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, I have no doubt in you that you will achieve that. <laughs> thank you for today's you so interview much. and thank you for being part of Onco Daily. Thank you everyone for watching and come again for next time. Thanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>